What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story, your neighborhood movie poster art director, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create some tear effects in Photoshop as well as color correction towards the end and a little bit of a type tutorial. So be sure you watch this from beginning to end to get the full effects of this how-to video. <laughs> All right, let's get this party started. Fire up that Photoshop. Get yourself a nice movie poster template. If you're brand new to this channel, then you know we like to create movie poster related Photoshop tutorials. And if you need a template, go check out the how to make a pro movie poster template down below. First things first, let's talk about the assets that we will be using in this tutorial. I went to Envato.com where I have a yearly subscription for licensed and licensable photography and graphics. I picked out this awesome picture of this girl. It looks nice and dramatic. We're going to be creating the realistic paper tear across her face and uh, reveal and leave the eyes there. And I think those eyes just look amazing for this situation. So that's what we're gonna do. The other thing we're gonna need is our paper tears, which you can see here. Try to find yourself some tears that are nice and fibrous. I'm gonna hit Command Plus and zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. But these fibers are showing through from the paper and I really like that. Sometimes people don't get realistic enough with their tears and in this situation, I think we are lucky enough to find this paper here that's gonna work perfect. Of course, you can always go make your own paper, take a photo and drop it into Photoshop too. The last two things are these paper textures which may come in handy and definitely this paper here which is going to probably be our background and then we'll put this on top as well in the effects folder to uh, add a little fire, or add a little texture to everything overall. So let's go ahead and drop this first one, this paper texture into our background folder, Command T and transform it up words like such. And then let's make a copy of that and then just drop that up into our effects folder, Command J to make a copy and then just drag it to the effects folder. And we're just gonna leave it there for now, but make sure you turn it off and get rid of any unnecessary layers. I don't know why that one was there. There we go. Now let's get our girl and hit Command T and kind of just see what the crop is gonna look like. I know she's gonna take up most of the space on the top of our composition, something like that for now. Uh, we can go ahead and tweak it later, but I definitely wanna get to the paper tear. So let's look at that tear. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can. If you're new to masks, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at one of our mask, how to mask tutorials, which should be on our site, our channel soon. But for now, I'm just going to kind of explain this. So we really want to get rid of this shadow and keep this white beige paper tear and then get rid of this black paper and get rid of this bottom entirely because we're just gonna have one tear going across the face. And the easiest way to do this is to double click on our smart object and it's gonna take us to smart object land, which is a, just a different art setup. So don't freak out. <laughs> and then uh, over here in our layers, we're gonna go to channels and do a channel pull. And all that is is really picking out one of our colors that has the most contrast and then we're gonna use that to make a selection and get rid of. So it sounds complicated, but just bear with me. Look for which channel has the most contrast. So for this situation, it's blue. And now we're gonna make a copy of that by dragging that layer down to the little plus symbol. And now we're gonna even add more contrast by hitting Command L, which brings up levels. And then we're gonna play with the levels, these little, this little tool here and dragging these back and forth. So what we wanna do is get the shadow really dark and black and then get this really black here, but leave the white of the tear intact. To do that, just start playing with the meter. Something like that, and you can still see the fiber popping through and that's what we want. And then some of this stuff we can just kind of, kind of finesse later on. Go to your layers and this is, uh, this is in a red, which is fine. 
all we're going to do is go up to select, select color range, and then just have your dropper click on the white. That's fine. Hit OK. Well, you can keep your fuzziness. Mine's at 130. That's fine for now. I don't want to get into what that all means. So just hit OK. And now you see the little ants marching, and that means we can hit our mask down here to the bottom right. So hit the mask icon and we have our mask and now you can see this is what we want see that all of this paper texture this white paper beige texture is what we want and then once we get this over into our original composition we're going to get rid of all of this unnecessary stuff down here and then we're going to recreate our shadow uh, later on in the process but for now go ahead and hit command c to copy and we're just going to copy and paste this layer back into our original artboard so now hit command v and we have our masked out paper now go ahead and bring our girl back into the picture and we're just going to drop her down so just click and drag her down below that layer and we can kind of see what we're working with now let's just bring our paper tear down as well we're just going to drop this down so that that it doesn't really get in front of her eyeball something like that now to make everything easy, let's look at our mask here on the paper tear and let's get rid of anything that is below the mask. And we're going to, since this is already masked out, we're just gonna use a pen tool to go where the shadow used to be. And that's already masked out. So it's already done the heavy lifting for us. And we can kind of delicately use the pen tool to create a selection in here where my arrow is and then get rid of all this stuff on the bottom. So hit P for pen tool and then command plus to zoom in. And now if you're using your Wacom tablet, pick your pen up and then let's just go ahead and start making a selection. And I wanna preserve, I since this is already masked out right here, I wanna preserve all the fiber. So I'm just gonna try and get rid of or keep the fiber in there. And then right here, the mask didn't get all the way, it didn't mask all this out, so we're just going to kind of do the best we can like that, and that should do the trick. And now I'm gonna hit Command negative, make sure that all of this is selected, and then right click and hit Make Selection. 0.2 pixels is fine. And now I'm gonna make sure that I'm selected on the mask over in my layer section, and then I wanna make sure over here that black is my secondary color. And now I'm just gonna hit Command, delete and mask all of that out. Cool. Now what's not cool is we still have her, so we're gonna to have to put a mask on her as well. And to do that, we're gonna use the same mask, except copy it and drag it down to that layer. So go ahead and hit option and then drag it. And now we have her masked out, but we need to make sure that everything above her is going to be visible. Let's go ahead and hit Command plus. Now we're basically gonna do what we just did with our pen tool, except we're going to reveal everything above the tear so that we get her eyes and the upper portion of her face visible again. So hit P for pen tool, and we're just going to make a selection following our tear. Like this, Command negative, and just make sure this is good to go. And then right click, select, make selection, hit OK. And now make sure we're on our mask over here in our layer section. And then we're gonna make sure white is our secondary color. And you can go back and forth. You can toggle back and forth between your colors by hitting X. And now we're gonna hit Command delete and bring her back in. So now the mask has revealed her and everything that is white is revealed and everything that is black on your mask is hidden. I got a little carried away with the tutorial and I forgot to ask you to hit that like button. If you're enjoying this video and learning a ton, hit the like button now. I really appreciate it. It makes us feel like we're doing something right. Now let's go ahead and make a couple tweaks to our tear mask because if you look closely we have some stuff that might look a little better if we actually bring some of this uh, back through. So go ahead and hit B for brush and then we're going to paint back on that mask so make sure we're on the mask and then use x to make sure that we're painting with white so that it reveals and we're just going to paint in little areas that may look better if it was just paper still and my flow's on 64 it's, it's an intense flow which is fine for this situation we're 
All right. Looks a lot better. We have some shadows over here. It's giving it this realistic feel. You can kind of see those little shadows right there. That's really important. Let's see what happens if we add a little more right there. Looks good. So I like it. We really want to add a shadow to give it a little bit of dimension below it so it looks like it was torn. And we're just gonna do a quick and dirty shadow by just basically painting underneath that layer with our brush. So go ahead and create a new layer underneath our photograph and then hit B for brush. We're still on it probably. And then make sure we're painting with black, but drop your flow down to something around, I don't know, 5%. And then we can just lightly paint where a shadow would be. So I'm just gonna delicately do this. Now I'm just gonna do one more layer and create another shadow, but on top and just make it a little lighter around. And this just takes a little bit of finessing and something like that. And we can also drop the opacity and do a couple different, have a couple layers. I'm gonna do one more layer and get it a little closer to the edge. That and then maybe just drop the opacity a tad. And then we're just gonna set this into its own group. So make sure you select using shift and now we're gonna hit command G and then we're gonna name the shadows just so, th just so that we stay organized. And we can always go back in and mess with it if we want to. All right, so everything's looking pretty good up until now, up until this point. I really want to go ahead and drop the saturation. And to do that, we're just going to go up to our effects and then go to our adjustment layers over here and go to hue saturation. And that's gonna bring up our hue saturation property. And then we're just gonna drop the saturation. And now I'm looking at the shadow and I'm really not digging it all that much. So we're just gonna drop the opacity a little. Now we have our paper background and we can just kind of leave it at, leave it as is for now but we, we also made the copy and I want that copy to provide us with a little texture overall so that her face and this paper kind of look like they came from the same, I don't know, notebook or book or whatever. Go ahead and make that layer visible and then go up to our blending modes and we're gonna see if any of these blending modes are gonna work with this situation. We just want it to have a nice little subtle amount of texture. So we're gonna have it on soft light, but I'm gonna drop the opacity a little like that. And then I'm gonna try one more thing of texture. So we had that one other piece of texture. We're gonna drop that up here as well. And now we're gonna hit Command T, make sure that it, you make it large enough to hit the entire piece of artwork. And then we're same thing, we're just gonna do a little blending mode to see if any of these are gonna make it uh, look okay. So I'm just gonna use Darken. And then I'm gonna put a little mask on there. So hit the mask icon and then hit Command I. And we're just gonna paint some of those little textures back in. So now that our mask is inverted, we can paint with white and that will subtly let some of these come back into play, usually around the edges, but we don't want it to be too strong. So you can go ahead and use your discretion. And now I just kind of want to add some overall color to the entire thing using a LUT. So let's head over to our adjustment layers, hit up color lookup, and just see if any of these are going to look good. So that warms it up. This one, the whites. So I'm just gonna use this Kodak 5218. And then I'm just gonna drop the opacity cause it's looking pretty cool. Like the temperature of the composition is cool. So I'm just drop it a little bit. And now I kind of need a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna go below our two pieces of paper texture, go to curves and then just make a little S curve with our curves adjustment layer and see if that contrast helps us out. And maybe I'll add a little bit, go back up to that LUT layer, the color look up one. And you know what? I don't like that. Let's go see what happens if we pick something else. So let's just use that. And then let's just drop that a tad. So that's the Eterna, the Fuji Eterna 250D. Now all we can do, now everything looks pretty good. And we may want to just tweak the shadow a tad. Let's go to our shadows and see what happens if we raise it back up to 100 and then see what that looks like. Still feels a little strong. So we're just gonna keep the opacity at 80, somewhere close to that, and then maybe add one more layer and then paint in some shadow right in here. And then let's just see what happens when we darken our paper. So 
put a curve, go to background group, go to curves adjustment layer, and we're just going to darken that bottom and it's going to bring out a little bit more of that paper texture. And then I'm going to go back up to the hue saturation like you just saw and just drop that hue down even more. Now we can just add some type for fun. Go to the type group, new layer, hit T, and we're going to call this broken hearts. <laughs> So we'll just do broken and then do a new layer, call it hit T, type in hearts. And I have alternate Gothic number one D as the font that I'm using. Just roughing this in a little bit. Turn the blending mode to probably overlay. And then let's just see what happens when we, I'm just gonna drop these down below. Normally I would just create a mask, but I'm trying to do this quickly. And I'm just gonna drop that below our hair. And then we're just gonna tuck that in. And now we essentially have a movie poster. We have plenty of room for some copy. Bugs down here for the movie studio or whatever. And, and or if this is a graphic design project, you have so much room for more type and copy to play with. But I kind of just wanted to use this as a tutorial to show you how to get a realistic effect. I would probably go back in and work on that shadow and make it a little bit more realistic. But since we're trying to do these tutorials on the quicker side. I just wanted to get the basics of putting a tear in and I think we've achieved that. So I really appreciate everybody for making it this far and watching this video. Go ahead and hit that like button if you learned anything and feel free to subscribe if you want to get involved with the poster grind tutorials and future tutorials.